So when I was 13, I went into cardiac arrest while I was training for a 5K with school. I was diagnosed with exercise-induced asthma, so I wasn't running, I was walking. And a couple of my girlfriends were up front and I wanted to meet up with them, so I ran just a little bit, maybe like 300 feet to meet up with the, the girls that I knew. And it was there that I passed out and went to cardiac arrest. I don't remember a thing. My PE teacher performed CPR until the EMTs arrived. She's the one that I owe everything to, because if she hadn't have thought to be quick, to do CPR and to not be afraid to just get right into it. Yeah, she's my hero. I was in a state of shock. Um, I was overwhelmed. Um, and the only thing I knew was I got to get to the hospital ASAP. When I woke up after my cardiac arrest, I didn't really know what had happened. I didn't know what was going on. And I had to have people say to me, you know, you've been in cardiac arrest and you've been diagnosed with a heart condition and we've implanted a cardiac defibrillator. Here's your life. It wasn't until I left and went home and still wasn't going back to school that it started to hit me that this was serious, that this wasn't just like a quick little hospital stay and that you know, I could go back to being with the rest of my friends. It was something that was gonna change my life forever. It's a lot for a 13 year old to go through. When I hit my 20s, I started studying um, dietetics and nutrition, and that became the first big change in my life. I knew that my heart condition wasn't something that I could prevent or control at this point. What I could do was give myself the best life possible within my limits. So the first thing I started doing was going plant-based, eating a clean, whole food diet as much as I could. I want to take off stress off my heart. What happened in 2016 was like this huge shift that I wasn't expecting. So I turned 30, which is a big change for most people, you know, and you hit your 30s and you feel like, okay, I've made it to adulthood. Like, I'm finally gonna be able to do all these amazing adult things. And you feel like you're grown up. Um, what I started noticing at 30 was that my normal heart symptoms were becoming stronger. It was, I can't get out of bed today because I don't have the energy. I physically can't handle getting out of bed. I realized that it was probably time I go back to my cardiologist and see what was going on, but I didn't expect to hear what I did here. I was at the doctor's office. Um, I was the last appointment of the day. She walked in and sat down right in front of me, like within eye level, and looked me right in the face and said, I'm worried about you. And that's not something that you want to hear from your cardiologist the first time they see you. That's not ever something you want to hear from a doctor. There was no leading up to it. You know, she had said, this is the test results that we had gotten, and it shows that you are in end stage HCM, and you're tracking towards needing a heart transplant. You're in heart failure. There's no words to explain that feeling besides just complete disbelief and shock. I had real fear almost three weeks of being in the hospital, I was ready to go home. I remember texting my boyfriend and saying, I'm tired, I wanna go home. I'm done, I'm over this. And he just responded with, hang in there, your heart's coming. And that was the day they found the heart. The surgeon comes in with his assistant and I won't ever forget his face because he kind of like had this small grin that's really hard to see. Most surgeons are really stoic. And he had just this small little grin and he said, but there's this one and it looks pretty good and we're gonna take it. So I got a heart offer last night and they just told me this morning it's a match. So I'm getting a new heart. Post-transplant when I woke up, that first thought was, I'm here, I made it. Okay, so this part is over. I guess I was just overwhelmed at you know, the, the, this amazing thing that had happened. And then, you know, you think about, you know, the, the donor and the donor's family and, and what an amazing thing that they did for you. They gave her more time, you know, and they gave us more time with her. My new job was to be healthy, to be fit, and to make sure that I took really good care of this gift that I was given. And so my new job started that day. 
if this is going to happen to you, she was in exactly the right hands and in exactly the right place that she needed to be. It's, it's a miracle, you know? My initial mission when I was in my 20s was CPR and kind of getting more involved with the American Heart Association and prevention in that level. I guess my new mission now is to be more involved in prevention with the people that are part of that 80% of preventable cardiac illness. So I want to become a personal trainer. I want to work with people that have dealt with cardiac issues, whether it's bypass surgery, stents, strokes, so forth, and helping them find wellness after cardiac rehab and making sure that they don't end up with the same issues over and over again. Um, and just kind of telling my story and letting people know that you can, you know, find health and wellness if you really try. It's just, it's all, it's all you. It's 100% you. My family and I would like to thank the American Heart Association for all the research you do and for supporting CPR in schools and inspiring future heart savers. Awesome. Ha, ha, ha.